welcome to the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez circuit in downtown Mexico City for the third round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. And of course, welcome to this Nissan Formula E pre-race show. I'm Darren Adetosie and we'll be here at each round providing you with exclusive access to the Nissan Edams Formula E team, drivers, cars, and taking you along with us behind the scenes in the garage. Now, this is the eighth season of the all-electric World Championship, which sees 22 drivers battling it out across 10 different countries. And if you're new to Formula E, here's a handy guide to explain how this exciting all-electric series works. Formula E is a highly competitive, fully electric racing series. 22 world-class drivers and 11 teams, including some of the world's biggest manufacturers, are battling it out wheel-to-wheel -wheel on the streets of iconic cities. Racing at speeds up to 280 kilometers per hour and accelerating from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.8 seconds, with a maximum power output of 250 kilowatts. The 45 minutes plus one lap race produces high intensity racing with teams and drivers battling on a level playing field thanks to identical batteries, tires and aerodynamics. Unique features like attack mode and fan boost make Formula E anything but a traditional motorsport and for the 2022 season the cars have an extra 20 kilowatts of power to play with meaning faster and more furious battling but still with the crucial need for teams and drivers to manage energy efficiently and strategically to win the race and secure victory. This this is the pinnacle of electric racing. This is Formula E. Now that we've seen how it all works, here's how the Nissan Edams team did last time out. First qualifying over here in, uh, in Diria. We got some uh, incidents with yellow flags uh, where we had to slow down uh, on, on our quick laps. So we did all, all we could today with these circumstances and uh, now very much looking forward to the race. And we go green in Diria! Bird is having to defend a little from Max Gunther. It's been a tough race for us. Obviously, I didn't have a good qualifying and then uh, couldn't make up much positions. We, we didn't have enough pace in the race, to be honest. We understood where the problems were, especially in the race pace, and uh, we hope to have a better performance. Today. And we go green in Syria. It's a good start from De Vries. Bryce has gone away OK, but Mortar has done a decent job in the black Venturi in the middle. I think that today we, we were in a much stronger position in the race. It's a starting point uh, from where we can build on and hopefully improve very soon to, to be uh, in the point. Welcome to Maso, it's great to see you again. Now, Diri is all done and dusted. How did you find the two races? Well, they didn't go as well as we were hoping for. Actually, we didn't collect any points, so they didn't go well. And uh, we made some mistakes and we had a technical problem. Uh, but looking at more in details, uh, we had some improvements on the race pace from the first to the second race. Uh, we made a mistake in, uh, in qualifying the first race. The second race, we were a little bit unlucky. So overall, we saw some positives out of the two races. So we hope that we will uh, perform better in Mexico. And what did you make of the new qualifying format? Well, it was exciting. I had a, a positive um, opinion before seeing it in action already. Uh, but then uh, during the events, I, I, I found them very, very exciting. Yeah. Well, the fans really enjoyed it as well. And speaking of, we're going to go on to your fan questions. So thanks for sending them in. If you want to have the opportunity to have yours featured in our next episode, then you can submit them over on nismo.com or in the comments below or via our social media. So starting off with the first question, Charles 3.5 has asked you, what improvement has the team made regarding the car and its software? Well, the car in terms of hardware is the same, of course, from last season to this season. Of course, we worked a lot on, on software. We cannot disclose <laughs> where we worked the most, but we, we had some areas where we knew we could find more performance. And unfortunately, as I said before, we, we didn't show this in the first two races, but uh, we know that this is where we will find more performance in the future. Amazing. Um, next question it comes from Sathwi, and they ask, what are the expectations for season eight? Well, definitely we want to perform better than season seven and we want to show that we are in a positive trend to go back to the top where we believe Nissan belongs. And as I say, the final one isn't actually a question. Um, it's just someone saying best of luck for Mexico, full send. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's it's really always great to hear that. <laughs> and thanks to you, Tommaso, and thanks for you guys for sending those in. Keep them coming. 
So Max, last time we caught up, it was before you'd gotten out on the track in Diria. Now that you've done the first two races of the season, let's reflect on how it all went. So starting off with that new qualifying format, what did you make of it? I think it's brilliant, you know, uh, us drivers, the fans, everybody, we, we enjoyed a lot because it's a, it's a great show, it's something I feel unique that we've not seen before. Uh, I would have loved to be in the duels because it looks really exciting. I was the, like the first one to miss out in P9 on, yeah. uh, on, uh, on, on the first race. But uh, no, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's great and I really look forward to experience it uh, many more times this season. And going back to the race itself, how did you find that? Um, I think, you know, the first race we had like some, some issues in, in the race. Uh, our energy management, our pace was not as strong. So even though we were running P7 for quite some time at the beginning, we were not able to transfer it into a points result. We finished 12th. Um, so yeah, based on that, we learned a lot. I think for the second race day, so our race pace was much better and we were really uh, yeah, competitive. So that was a great step. Unfortunate thing was that qualifying on that day didn't go as well for us uh, as, a, as a team. So we didn't start uh, yeah, high enough in the ranking and then um, the area was difficult to make up uh, a lot of places. So yeah, I feel like um, Sure, surely it would have been nicer to, to be here now with some, some points in the pocket. Uh, but nevertheless, I feel there were a lot of positives from, from my first race weekend with, with the team and I enjoyed it a lot. Well, taking those learnings from Diria, going into Mexico, what are your hopes for this weekend? I, you know, Mexico is such a different track, so many different challenges. So, I mean, of course, we want to transfer all the knowledge from, from Diria now onto onto this track. Uh, I think we've got, a, or we've had a very good preparation um, the last few days and um, yeah, really look forward to, to race on this track with these unique challenges here and then to, yeah, to perform really well in qualifying and then as well uh, in the race on Saturday. Well, yeah, let's talk a bit more about this track because this is more different from the traditional Formula E circuit, isn't it? Talk us through the differences. Yeah, I mean, like this, this track, I would say, is very unique because it's so, so wide. That's something we usually don't have in Formula E and uh, very quick corners, uh, a lot of like overtaking opportunities on the one hand on, on this straight here, then as well on the, on the back straight. So really, yeah, a track uh, with a lot of opportunities for energy management, strategic moves and, um, and slipstreaming as well. So yeah, I think there are many things to, to take into consideration and uh, it's, it's a great track. And last thing maybe to mention is uh, this big stadium that we've got here with, uh, with this yeah, unique uh, atmosphere with, with the fans uh, uh, will, be, will be special here. Yeah. Well, speaking of fans, we have some fan questions that have come in. Uh, thanks for sending those in. OK, so the first question comes from Charles on Instagram um, and he asks, Max, how have you adapted to the new car after two races? Um, I feel my adaptation has been um, really good in the last few weeks. You know, Valencia, first time for me in the car. Obviously, there are many, many new things. Uh, you can learn some, some things in a simulator, but obviously you have to experience it. So Valencia was very useful to get like a first feel for many things. But now this next step in, in, in Diria, my first um, yeah, drive on the race condition with the whole competition, I feel it has been um, yeah, really good. Was was really pleased with my personal performance uh, on, that, uh, on that weekend. And um, yeah, I try to keep keep growing, growing uh, together with, uh, with my car and uh, to, to keep improving. Yeah. Next question comes from Sin06.12 and they ask, name one destination you're most looking forward to for travel this season. Well, uh, the shortest travel for me will be Monaco. So yeah. uh, I like this place quite, quite a lot. Um, yeah, just I think the atmosphere, you know, uh, on, on this circuit, the history and um, really the, yeah, the, the wish to, to win this race is uh, I think the biggest for for all of us uh, because of all this history. Yeah, uh, so iconic, isn't it? Has, yeah. So yeah, I would pick uh, this one as my home race. Amazing. And then the final question is, how do you like your coffee? Are you a tea or are you a coffee person, actually? I'm absolutely a coffee person. You're a coffee person. Okay, yes. how do you like your coffee? Well, usually uh, I have three coffees a day. Oh my God. Um, always one, uh, one cappuccino. Yeah. Um, lactose free, mm -hmm. uh, if, if possible. And uh, two, two espresso. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Max. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm joined by Mariana from Nissan Mexico. Mariana, it's great to have you here. Now, Nissan have such a huge presence here in Mexico and motorsports in general is massive. Why is it so special here? Actually, Nissan in Mexico, as you know, we are number one brand, automotive brand in here. And Mexicans are very patient. We have a very, a legacy in terms of motorsports 
experience because of those Mexican uh, drivers. And so this event here make a, a special one because the passion and, and for us uh, from Nissan, it's a very it's a huge opportunity to deliver this excitement for our audience. Yeah. And year over year, the audience that come here, that comes here in, in, in Formula E race, it's getting bigger and bigger. And, and new uh, young people and, and people that are interested in new technologies. And so for us, it's a, it's a pleasure to have this presence in a market that we are number one to have this experience as Formula E and deliver this for our public, our audience yeah. here in Mexico. And I noticed that Nissan actually have an activation over in the e-village. Could you share more about that? Oh yes, every year we, we, we give this experience, not only the experience to see and watch the race, but also to have the interaction with our technologies. So this year we are preparing these activations, a huge one, and we are going to show all the, the news and especially a, a very good one that we are bringing to our market, the e-power technology. Mm -hmm. So the Mexicans that will uh, be here uh, watching the race will have this opportunity to know more about this new technology. Uh, as you know, for us, Nissan, a Formula E, it's a very huge platform for us to deliver our, to, to share our strategies in terms of electrification. Yeah. So that's why this big activation that we are going to see, uh, it's very important to us because we want to share all those news to Mexican people. Ooh, I can't wait to head down and see it. Yeah. Well, speaking of the racing action then, are you looking forward to it? What do you love the most about Formula E? Ooh, Formula E for me, it's a very special one because in the beginning, the first time you see the Formula E, maybe you see, oh, I, I, I don't hear the noise. Yeah. And, but when you get here and you, you feel the emotion and the excitement, so they can experience this feeling and, and make all the cheers for the, the, the pilots the drivers so it's 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 amazing yeah. i think everybody should uh, have the experience here in in formula e to feel what we see couldn't agree more well i really hope you enjoy the race thank you so much for joining us thank you thank you everybody <laughs>I've managed to grab Max and you're going to give us a tour of the garage, aren't you? Yes, uh, first of all, uh, welcome to the Nissan Idams garage Thank here. Thank you very much. Um, as you can see, um, yeah, both our cars, uh, one of mine, of Seb. Um, I think special about our garage really is that um, it's quite close and tight here because yeah. we have both cars in one garage in order to then give more place to the, to the engineers over there, which obviously is a very important thing because they have so many things to manage and to be close to us, yeah. like a window to look through, is kind of uh, what our team found is the most efficient way to to um, yeah to position everything. Then uh, we've got obviously like behind us, we've got the, the toolboxes for the for the mechanics. Uh, like uh, there's a driver area mm. for us to be to relax a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they have all our equipment. Um, then as well uh, like a powertrain department um, where the, the mechanics they can really work on all uh, all the mechanical um, parts and the uh, coffee machine most importantly <laughs> behind part? us yeah have you had your third coffee yet today not yet not i yet. need to go for it soon yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway isn't this your steering wheel yes amazing that's, could you give us a, a little that's my steering around wheel. For correct yeah yeah i mean um basically every i mean the, the main steering wheel uh visually it's the same for everybody, but yeah. what you do with the buttons, with the rotaries, this is really totally individual. And everybody right. is doing it uh, by its own. So a few things I can tell you um, about it, like uh, the reach and paddles, we've got uh, two of them, um, um, which are very important for the, for the race to, to drive very efficient yeah. and before each corner we, we pull it. Um, then obviously we've got like the, the button for the, for the pit speed limiter, for the radio button, for the fan boost. Nice. Um, then um, with those two, we can adjust our uh, brake balance. Yeah. Um, and uh, this one is for the attack mode. Very nice. important in That's the- That's the only one I recognize. In the race, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then really, I mean, on these switches here, you've got different scenarios for the different power modes. You know, okay. we've got to 20 to 50 kilowatts of power um, for race and for, for, for quali. Um, and then here, this is mainly like really for for the energy management with the region, with the braking system, they are really, it's very complex. There are a lot of things 
that you can see uh, we need to we need to manage and um, actually in fact I could now talk a lot more about it yeah but I mean every team has got kind of its own secret like uh, these two paddles here for what we use it um, <laughs> you know it says uh, Oscar and uh, Lisa oh my gosh. so we've got some <laughs> some uh, Quite a lot of female names actually on the steering wheel, yeah. trying to hide, you know, things from from other people. Keep a code. Keep a code, yeah. so not to not to, yeah, show too much or talk too much um, about the system that you're using because everybody obviously is Listen pushing for performance yeah. and you don't want to give it away if you tell it on the on the radio. So that's why we've got a lot of uh, strange words here on our on our steering wheel. But, uh, Amazing. Yeah. How long did it take for you to learn all of this? I mean, actually, it's not that easy because, you know, I was uh, the last two seasons in, in BMW, the steering wheel obviously looking completely different. Yeah. Uh, every word is basically different. So really the first few weeks I had to really like go back to school, learn it from, from zero. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, then it goes very quickly and you have the simulator where you can practice all the things. Right. So actually, yeah, I would say after a few weeks time, I was fully comfortable in my new uh, office. Well, yeah. thanks for explaining all of that. I don't think any of that went in, but I, I really appreciated it. <laughs> um, yeah, really cool. Thanks, Max. Pleasure. Attack mode is an extra power mode that gives the drivers an additional 30 kilowatts of power after driving through an activation zone located off the racing line. So for example, here at the Four Soul section of the Mexico City track between turns 11 and 12, the traditional racing line would see the drivers go through here over this section. However, to activate attack mode and get that extra boost of power, drivers are going to have to go off of the racing line through here to activate attack mode, which is going to lose them time and potentially position. The drivers will have to drive it through these activation zones and over a series of sensors set into the track. Miss them and not only have they gone offline, have lost lap time and potentially position, but they get no extra boost of power and are gonna have to do it all over again during the race. However, if a driver has successfully activated attack mode, then they'll get an extra boost of power for a set duration of time, helping them make up for the time and positions lost, moving them further up a field. You can tell when a driver's activated attack mode because the lights on their halo will glow blue. The number and duration of attack modes required changes from circuit to circuit. The other way a driver might gain extra power during the race is from a fan boost. Fan Boost provides the drivers with an extra 30 kilowatts of power during the race, which allows them to make a critical overtake or defend against the cars behind them. The five drivers with the most votes will unlock the extra power boost in the second half of the race by clicking a button on their steering wheel. And to make sure that it's the Nissan drivers who benefit from Fan Boost, don't forget to cast your votes on the Formula E website. So Seb, good to see you. Um, Diria didn't necessarily go as planned, but what learnings did you take from that race that you can bring to Mexico? Yeah, as you said, it, it didn't go exactly as we, we wanted. Um, so we've been, we've been trying to analyze, uh, tr to analyze what we didn't do right. And actually we've spotted quite a few things that we, we didn't do uh, perfectly. So hopefully we can adjust them for, for this weekend. It's a racetrack where we've been in the past quite competitive. So, uh, um, yeah, I hope that we can uh, yeah, translate everything we've learned in, in Diria into uh, a good um, a good result this weekend. And last time we were here, you were obviously on the podium, which is very exciting. What do you think makes this track so special? Well, I think it's already the fact that we race at uh, 2,200 uh, meters. So the altitude obviously is playing a big, uh, a big, a big role uh, on this race. Uh, the asphalt gets really, really hot. So it's really tough for the tires. It's really the opposite of uh, what happened in, in Diria. I think it's going to be quite straightforward in the quali group, what people will do instead of what we've seen in Diria, lots of different uh, strategies. Um, and I just, you know, like the last corner, the long straight, the opportunities to overtake, the stadium. I think it's a unique uh, track and I think everyone will agree that we enjoy it. And another really exciting part about this track are the fans. Um, what do you enjoy the most about them being here? Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. You know, we are still kind of in the COVID situation. So I'm looking forward to see lots of people in the grandstand yeah. and uh, having lots of guests here from Nissan. So uh, just just happy to, to see that we're going to go back to normal kind of racing properly now. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. And speaking of the fans, we have some questions. Thanks for sending them in. Uh, so starting off with Charles 3.5, he asks, do you like the new qualifying format? 
Yeah, of course, um, I didn't yet get the opportunity to experiment the, the duel. So uh, to be honest, uh, I just like when I'm competitive and um, yeah, in Diri, I was not so, so much the case. But I, I think it makes it a little bit more fair for everyone. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be it's going to be good. I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, three, four times doing that qualified qualifying system to, to properly say whether I really like it or not, but I think it's, it's going to be good. Amazing. Uh, Kazoo23 underscore 35 asks, how difficult is the tyre management in the qualifying and the race? Really good question. Um, yeah, so this year we have more power in the race. Uh, the attack mode is also uh, with more power. So as you can imagine, the tyre management is a little bit more of an issue. Uh, Diria is generally quite easy on the tyre, so we did not yet experiment the racetrack where it's tough. But here, it will not be so easy. So it's going to be one of the first time that we really experiment more power, uh, more deg, also more temperature. So I think this weekend we'll really understand how, how much more difficult it is to manage the tyres. And in qualifying, I don't think it's going to be so much different. We have two sets of tyres. We can play with those two sets in the groups and the duel. So I don't, I don't expect it to be necessarily more difficult in qualifying. OK, and the final question is from Lorenzo, who asks, do you have the same software settings on both cars or does the driver choose the settings they like the most? So obviously the, the, the basic stuff is the same for both cars. Yeah but then you can adjust uh, a few things according to your driving style or what you prefer. Uh, mainly, we, we, we don't have big differences between the two cars. It, it may happen in the race after FP1, FP2 that we want to tune it slightly differently, but we always start with the same one. Fantastic. Thanks very much, sir. Thank you. Well, that's all that we have time for today, but it was great catching up with Tommaso, the drivers, and Mariana from Nissan, Mexico. Now all that's left is the racing action itself, and qualifying kicks off on Saturday at 11.40 a.m. local time and 6.40 p.m. CET. The race itself kicks off at 4 p.m. local time and 11 p.m. CET. If you want the opportunity to have your question featured in the next episode, then you can submit them over on nismo.com in the comments down below or via our social media. If you enjoyed today's video as well, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more electrifying content. But we'll be seeing you in Rome for the next round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Make sure to tune in and we'll see you soon.